I'm Richard Engel, this time on Hidden Planet. In all of the world, how many places like this are still around? There's no place like this. It's pumping with life. It's electric. I've never been to a place like this. And I probably will never again. I'm Richard Engel. I've traveled to a lot of dangerous places, been caught in the middle of wars and revolutions. But there are also fascinating places that deserve to be explored. Many you won't find in a travel brochure or tour book. And I'm going to take you there. So pack your bags as we uncover our hidden planet. It may seem like a place time forgot. Like a postcard from paradise. Raja Ampat, four main islands off the West Papuan mainland in Indonesia, surrounded by a cluster of smaller islands, about 1,500 of them. It's nearly 10 million acres of land and sea. Raja Ampat means four kings for the four mystical rulers who locals believe hatched from golden eggs. This may be the most breathtaking place in the world, and it is truly magical here. It's been called an underwater garden of Eden, the most biodiverse body of water on the planet. But unfortunately, tragically, it's at risk. Dr. Mark Erdman may know more about Raja Ampat than anyone alive. He's one of the world's leading marine biologists. Mark has been studying the area for 11 years, and there's a reason he comes here. Literally upon the first dive here, we just knew this was a very special place. And then over the course of two weeks of diving around and seeing just different habitat after different habitat, and just spectacularly beautiful both below and above water, we just knew this was, this was God's country. To spend time with Mark means to spend a lot of time underwater. And it's there that we can see why Mark is so passionate, and some might say so lucky, to do what he does. But before we dive below sea level, we take a ride around a few of the islands of Raja Ampat. Its beauty is spellbinding. Aside from looking absolutely idyllic, this is the scene you would imagine if you were ever stranded on a desert island in paradise. Why is this so unique? So this pretty much typifies the geology of Raja Ampat, which as I noted to you is basically uplifted fossil coral reef. This little yeah, so, island. So this is old coral, very, very old fossil coral. It's been uplifted and over you know, hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions of years, it, it's gotten like this. And you can see that the plant life grows straight out of the rock there. There is no soil on that at all. All of Rajampat is like this. And there aren't many places that can claim to have the most of anything. Raja Ampat has the most underwater life. The most kinds of corals, over 600, 10 times the number of coral found in the entire Caribbean. Never has anyone recorded more fish species than what we have on this dive site, 374 species. And you? One dive. On one dive, 370, one dive. and that's the record in the world? That's the record in the world. So that means this is the most biodiverse place in the world? Absolutely. On record? Absolutely. Well, let's go. Let's see it. A native Papuan blows triumphantly on a conch shell in the distance as we take off for an underwater adventure, an experience I'll never forget. Mark jumps in first to test the currents. How is the current? It's moving along. It's fast. <laughs> yeah. A lot of fish, though. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And with one last check of my mask, I'm excitedly not far behind.
down below, we run into some unique fish. Ones like clownfish, who snuggle for protection from predators inside poisonous sea anemones. And exotic ones like the woebegone shark. Mark tickles its stomach, hypnotizing it to better show its perfect camouflage. We pass giant clams, a hundred years old or more. Also indigenous here are giant mantas. We find them in what's called a cleaning station. The mantas gather here and splay out their wings, all 12 feet of them, so little fish can pick off itchy parasites. A manta spa. They seem to love it. There are so few divers that the marine life seems completely unbothered by our presence. Especially this turtle who could care less about a biologist and an underwater television crew. Mark isn't just a biologist. He's an explorer and the most prolific discoverer of new fish species of his generation. He's discovered 89 species himself Eight fish are named after him. Amazingly on a dive, we witness Mark's discovery of a new species of snapper. He spears one for a sample. He brings it to the surface to preserve it, so scientists have a record that this fish exists and can study it. Basically, if you have a new species, it's very important that you put what is, in essence, the gold standard of that species into a museum so that at any time another scientist who wants to look into the whole thing can go to the museum and check against this gold standard, and that's called a type specimen. Yeah, so this, this appears to be the juvenile of the, the Papua One Snapper. And if there's anyone who could rival Mark for the title of Supreme Raja Ampat expert, it's Max Amer. He's Dutch and has been living here like a modern Robinson Crusoe for 20 years, running a conservation center and hotel. And in a story as unique as Max himself, he started it all by finding Coca-Cola bottles. That's right, World War II Coke bottles. He found thousands of them at one of General MacArthur's old bases in Raja Ampat. He sold the bottles to collectors for $20 a piece. That's entrepreneurship. Each of them have their stamp. Like this one is from Arizona. From, what does it say, Douglas? Douglas. Douglas, Arizona? And this one is from Oakland, California. From Oakland, California. And where did you find these? Uh, these are from an island called Mar in the Birdhead. Uh, so there was an Allied base. And where did you find them? Underwater or in, um, in the bushes? These ones were still, you know, they, they were in a warehouse. The whole warehouse collapsed, but they were still standing next to each other in lines. You know, all the wood from the crates uh, go away, they're all on top of each other. You can also find piles of hand grenades this high. And by selling these, you were able to establish this yeah. entire place. You gave me the seed money. To build this. Yeah, I thought it was pretty fun. You take the garbage out of the nature, you sell it to, uh, to people, so the people who collect it, the nature is better off, the people who collect it make some money, the people who buy it are happy, and we could start a resort. That's great. That's great. Huh? It is a great story. Max is also the resident expert on the local people. You can still find tribal people that have never been in contact with the outer world. You can fly over areas that no human has ever walked. It's magical. That's Max's head popping up out of his small plane, showing us great aerial views of the majestic islands of Raja Ampat. The people of this area are predominantly Christians and Muslims, with a lot of traditional beliefs mixed in. Cannibalism was only banned here in the 1950s. That's when the last person was officially eaten. But the practice, although rare, still continues. Still happens, sometimes. Yeah, this is something people don't talk about. I mean, there are still tribal people who live in the interior. They're not contacted, so they live in the way they've always been living. The people of Raja Ampat nowadays are a mix of different tribes, from 
West Papua, as well as migrants coming from other parts of Indonesia. They are dependent on their fisheries and gardens. Children fish off the dock. There, fish are so plentiful, they don't even use bait. They just throw a hook and snag them. The West Papuans are very friendly and generous people. And culinary tradition aside, Raja Ampat is in serious danger. The shark population in this part of the world has been decimated. Uh, Southeast Asia, sharks have been fished out. They, they really, they're on their last leg. They're, Raja Ampat now has a shark sanctuary. There are no shark finning uh, operations that are allowed in Raja Ampat. This is a shark friendly zone. This is a shark friendly zone. It's pretty, huh? They're beautiful animals. Yeah. But the abundance of sharks here now has a downside. Mark has set up a network of rangers to protect them. The rangers go out every day patrolling for fishermen who hunt sharks to cut off their fins to sell for expensive soup, served mostly in China. And it may be the children who are the key to preserving this untamed region. These kids are being taught conservation on a fully equipped floating educational center. The Kalabia sails all year long in Raja Ampat stopping in every one of the 117 villages to teach children about nature. Angela Beer has been working on this unique touring conservation program for six years. They live here and a lot of them have never even seen the coral reef through a diving mask. But they do see the trash now washing up on their beaches. The trash doesn't come from the villages, but from cities edging in. This is their future. This is their sea. They are the future stewards. If we can't reach them now, at this point, early in their lives, then the future Raja Ampat is definitely in question. It just seems like such a special place. It is fantastic. I've never been to a place like this, and I probably will never again. For me, diving is meditation. I started diving years ago to forget wars and bullets. Underwater, there are no phone calls or explosions, only the sound of bubbles. On an island lake, I have one of my most unique underwater experiences. The lake is filled with hundreds of thousands of translucent jellyfish. They don't sting and only live in these warm, slightly salty waters. In the lake and in the deep blue, Raja Ampat feels magical. It's often said we know more about the distant planet than our own oceans. And Raja Ampat may have the most of all to teach us. A land time seems to have forgotten. And another breathtaking corner of our hidden planet.